This past week, we celebrated and remembered what the meaning of the cross is for our lives. And if you think about it, about maybe a journey that you have gone on in your own life, especially when you're taking a car trip, a long car trip, there's some preparation that goes on before that trip, isn't there? Maybe not so much anymore. But I remember when I was a kid, and we used to take long car trips from California to Colorado, sometimes even out east. My dad had everything mapped out. He knew exactly where we were going, when we were going to get there, and when we were going to leave from that place to the next place. He had the entire trip mapped out. He's a scientist, he's a dentist, and his mind thinks this way. But we do this even now. When I was a kid, we didn't have computers, but now you have MapQuest. And you can go on the MapQuest, and you can find out exactly, detailed, road by road, where you're going. And now we even have one better, this GPS, that I still don't have in my car, but apparently it's awesome. But even when you're using the GPS, what happens? That little screen comes up in front of you, and that little lady talks to you and tells you exactly where you're supposed to go, when you're supposed to turn, and guide you directly, and you see a map of your journey. Well, this is what Lent is for us. Lent is a journey. We're going somewhere. And for the past several weeks, we have been given by the church little road signs. What are they called? Road markers that we've been looking for on this journey. We're halfway through Lent. Believe it or not, in only two more weeks, Palm Sunday will be here. And a week after that, we all know what gets here, Pascha, Easter. We're halfway there. Um, the first week of Lent, that road map, that road uh, post that we saw, were the icons. Remember? The, uh, the day that we celebrated the triumph of orthodoxy, and all the kids marched around the church carrying the icons and holding them up high. And we were told that through those icons, our attention should be focused in on not only the icons and the beauty of them, but what they represent for us. And they represent the incarnation, that Christ came into this world. There would be no need for any icon unless Jesus Christ came into this world. They depict his life. They depict what he did for us. And they depict heaven, what he came to open up for us. And then that second week, a road marker that we had was an early church saint. His name was St. Gregory Palamas. And he lived in the 14th century. And he was a saint that understood and practiced deep faith. He was a prayerful man and a man of faith. And the church gives him to us as a road marker to remind ourselves that, yes, we're supposed to strengthen our faith during Lent. Are we doing that? And then last week, we were given the cross, as I said earlier, that symbol that in the scripture represented death. But now for us, because of what Christ did, it represents life. And if you've ever noticed what the priests wear, this big, um, we wear a lot of different things, but this big cape that we wear on the outer, on the outer part of our, our vestments, it's called the Philonion, and it's short here in the front, and it's really long in the back. And you see the priest wear it every single week. We don't serve without it for the divine liturgy. This is a reminder to the priest when he puts it on that we are called to carry our cross, like Christ told us in the gospel last week. It looks kind of like somebody carrying the cross. And it's to remind us what Jesus did. He carried that cross to that hill where he was crucified. And he told each and every one of us and his disciples that you need to pick up your cross and follow him and have faith. So it looks like the priest wears a cross. And every time you see a priest now, from now on, you will know for yourself. When I see that priest in this Philonion, oh yeah, I'm here at church. I'm called to carry this cross but not in a way that's a burden to us, but in a way that is a fulfillment to us. Because that cross was given to us last week at that halfway Sunday,
to remind us where we're going. There's a hill in California, and it's about halfway. It's a huge hill. They call it the Conejo Grade. And it passes up through a set of mountains, and it goes really high in a very short period of time, only two miles. You go up to the top of this mountain, and then you come back down on it. And it's really the separation pass that separates the Los Angeles Imperial Valley from the Santa Barbara or Ventura Valley. And when you come up over that pass, you go so high so quick that you can literally see your destination in front of you. You can see the Pacific Coast. You can see the valley laid out in front of you. And I'm from Santa Barbara. And my sister lives in LA. And when we would come back from visiting her, um, it's about an hour and a half trip. About 45 minutes into it, we get to the top of that hill. And when we're up there on a clear day, we can see about 44 miles to the edge of where Santa Barbara begins. So you can literally see our destination. This is what happened to us with Lent last week. We were given that cross as that reminder of where we're going. And then we have this week. And we are told a story that everybody should know. This happened right after Jesus was transfigured. He, glue, he, he glowed with the radiance of that divine light that St. Gregory Palamas believed each and every one of us has the ability to achieve for ourselves. And a man came to him, and he said, my son is, has seizures. He's sick. He's foaming at the mouth. He's filled with an evil spirit that's causing him to do this. And I took my son to your disciples, and your disciples couldn't do anything about it. So I'm begging you, will you please heal my son? Because this has been happening to him since he was a little boy. And this gospel seems kind of contradictory because at the beginning of Christ, of uh, the, the apostles' ministry, Jesus Christ told the, the apostles to do something with their life. He said, you're my apostles. You're chosen to follow me. And he said to them, this is your goal. This is what I am giving you the power to do. He said, let me see if I can find it here. He said that you are called to go preach. And he said you are called to cleanse the lepers. Because leprosy was a big problem then. And he said that you are called to raise the dead. Can you believe this? This is what Jesus Christ told these common fishermen and tax collectors to do. Go raise the dead. And he said, go cast out demons. And he said, freely I have given you this power. Freely go give it to others. But then, if you remember, in the reading today, this uh, man told Jesus that these apostles of yours that are supposed to be so great, they couldn't heal my son, so I'm bringing them to you. And Jesus said, how long has this been happening? He said, for a long time. And he said, do you believe that I can do this? And he said, Lord, I believe, but please help me in my unbelief. And he healed that boy. And they thought he was dead because that spirit left him. But Jesus took his hand and raised him, and he went on his way. But the disciples later, in reflecting, saying, how come we couldn't do this? You said you were going to give us the power to heal the sick, to cleanse lepers, to even raise the dead, and to preach. How come when this man brought his boy to us, we couldn't do it? And he said something very profound, and something that we need to remember on this fourth week of Lent. He said, this kind of activity is for everybody, but it can only come through strong belief and through the practice of praying and through the practice of fasting. Apparently, the apostles weren't really applying what they had been learning from Jesus. But we know later on that they must have picked up the pace a little bit in their life because it even says that St. Peter in the gospel, in the uh, um, book of Acts, that he at one point even raised a young woman from the dead. 
But we know from all the stories how many people they healed and how many demons were cast out because of them. But at this particular time, they still, had, they still hadn't had it right. And it's a good reminder for us of what we're called to do and on this journey that we're called toward to being on, this journey of prayer, this journey of, of fasting, this journey towards Christ's death and resurrection, this freedom from sin, and this opportunity to be reunited with him because of what he did on that cross. It's very, very, very important for us to remember that. Um, we also remember one other person today as a sign marker on this fourth, day, this fourth Sunday of Lent. His name's St. John, and he lived in a monastery. He was a monk, and he lived on the monastery of Mount Sinai in Egypt. And he wrote a book, and in this book, he listed a lot of stages that we can go through to develop our spirituality. He listed 30 different steps. And somebody later, after they read this book, wrote an icon. I know you can't see this. I was hoping to have a bigger one. But they wrote an icon describing that book for us. The book was written for monks, but the application applies to each and every one of us. The book was called The Ladder of Divine Ascent, and it talks about what we need to do in life in order to get from where we are to where we want to be, and that's with Christ in heaven. So there's this beautiful icon. I think everybody here should have this icon in their home. It's very powerful. It's the story of our life. It's the journey of our Lenten um, process, and it's really the journey of our entire Christian process. But there's a ladder here with 30 rungs on it because Jesus Christ began his ministry when he was 30. And there's these people that are going up this ladder. At the top of the ladder, there's Jesus. I know you can't see it, but in the corner, there's Jesus Christ, and he's reaching out his hands, and I think he's holding a book or a scroll. He's holding the, the gospel, and he's welcoming people, encouraging them to get up this ladder, apply these principles to your life, practice prayer, Practice fasting, build your faith, build your belief, and come and greet me. I'm here for you. But along the way, there's all these little black, they look like little demons or dark angels, and they have bow and arrows, and they're practicing their shooting range. <laughs> they're plucking off, trying to pluck off these men as they walk up to the top of this ladder, and they're succeeding at some times. There's a whole bunch of people down here that are clapping. These are all of us. This is the church clapping for ourselves, encouraging us to stay strong in our faith as we climb this ladder. And then up here, there's angels that are also stretching out their hands, kind of prayerfully, praying for us as we go. And each one of us at our baptism was given a, a guardian angel. And then down at the bottom, there's a scary symbol of a face with his mouth open, a very dark, scary-looking face. And there's actually one of these men that is falling into that mouth, and um, it represents where we don't want to be, hell. So it's a beautiful depiction, and it's given to us on this fourth Sunday of Lent as we remember and reflect on what Lent men means to us. And the more I think about it, the more I think that Lent, the real meaning of Lent, is that we're really not supposed to become too comfortable in this life. And I'll end with this, because St. Paul, in his letter to the Romans, at one point, said that we're not to con be conformed to this world, but we are to be transformed by the renewing of our mind, that we may prove what is good and what is acceptable and what is that perfect will of God. We're on a journey toward celebrating the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and everything that that means for us. But what we're really on is a journey of transformation, of becoming the people that God created us to be. So let us keep in mind these icons and St. Gregory Palamas and his great faith 
and St. John Climacus and his strong belief. And remember what happened to those apostles. Jesus said, if you had even a little faith, you could move mountains. In another place in the gospel regarding the same event, he said, you can move mountains. Go practice faith. Go practice prayer, go practice fasting, and you'll be able to do the things that I've given you the power to do. And he's talking to each and every one of us. So as we descend, I guess, on the other side of this Lenten journey, let's not um, sit back and relax, but let's pick up the pace. We have a lot of prayer services here for you throughout the weeks of Lent. Come join us. We have a lot of opportunities. The teens, and the young adults yesterday went to feed the hungry down in Detroit. We're working really hard to give these opportunities for you so that you can practice these things for your own life. Take advantage of them, and let's ask God for the rest of this Lenten period to guide us, to strengthen us, and to make us aware of these signposts along this way as we journey together towards Easter. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.